afterwards. You should have them afterwards. How's that for value? I gave you the answer in the first three seconds of this video. Well, joke's on you if you clicked off already because I'm gonna go into a lot more detail that you could probably learn from. So when should you take exogenous ketones during a fast or should you at all? I think we need to understand what is happening during a fast and why exogenous ketones could affect it in a potentially negative way. Okay, let's talk about this because then you'll get an understanding of when to take them. After this video, I want you to check out a company called Superfat. If you're doing any kind of intermittent fasting regimen or doing keto or any kind of low carb, higher fat protocol, you've got to check them out. Okay, they have delicious nut butters. My personal favorite is their nitro coffee nut butter. So literally coffee mixed with nut butter. It is so unbelievably good, but they have a bunch of other ones like MCT oil, macadamia nut blend. They have probiotic blend, almond butter. It's just super, super good. So there's a link down below that'll save you a few bucks if you want to try them out. They're a big supporter of this channel. So thank you, Super Fat, for the continued support the last two and a half years on this channel and check them out down below. They also have awesome brownie and pancake mix too if you're doing keto, which is like the best stuff I've ever had. So their link is down below in the description. We have to remember that ketones do not drive fat loss. They are a consequence of fat loss, and I've mentioned this in other videos before. Ketones are created as a byproduct of burning fat, metabolizing fat, and getting converted into a ketone. They are not more fat burning. The higher your ketones are, that does not mean that you are burning more fat. So during a fast, exogenous ketones can actually impede your fat loss. Why is this? Well. As our ketone levels get higher, and even potentially higher to a potentially unnatural level, they are going to send a feedback loop. They're gonna send a signal that says, ketones are getting too high, so please don't liberate more fat. Ketones are usually only created when we liberate fat and they get turned into ketones. So in essence, from a feedback loop standpoint, when we give ourselves exogenous ketones, the brain says, oh, we've liberated a lot of fat but we're not burning it and it's just compiling, it's just piling up. We better send a signal to the fat to stop releasing it. So it inhibits lipolysis. And this was demonstrated in a study that was published in the journal Biological Chemistry. So, I mean, we've seen it before, but the other piece of the equation that we have to look at is does it break a fast? I mean, we know it might slow fat burning, but like if you're satiated from it and it keeps you from like feeling hungry during a fast, there's sort of an argument that, well, then go for it. Like it keeps you satiated. So the question is, does it break a fast? Because when you're fasting, you're producing ketones. So who cares if you're adding more ketones? It's more benefit, right? Well, here's the thing. First of all, ketones contain four calories per ketone. Last time I checked, that will break a fast, right? Okay, but let's put that aside for a second too. The other thing we have to look at is what is called the ATP to ADP ratio, okay? That is a ratio that helps drive something called AMPK. AMPK is the energy sensor in our body. So when AMPK goes up, it tells the body that, okay, there's no food coming in, so you need to release other energy to keep this guy alive, i.e. fat from your belly or something, right? So when ATP, ADP is decreased, AMPK goes up. Whenever we have ketones come in, ketones are a fuel. They're like the fourth macronutrient, right? It absolutely increases ATP, which improves that ATP to ADP ratio, which drives down AMPK, because now the body says, oh, thank you, we have exogenous energy coming in, we don't need to be releasing fat anymore. So AMPK goes down, you're effectively diminishing the effect of a fast right then and there. Now, if you're fasting for cognitive reasons only and you're not worried about body composition, there could be an argument that ketones could help you there because ketones absolutely can cross through the blood-brain barrier and they may improve those you know, brain energetics and they may improve that network stability that helps you feel better. So I have experimented with exogenous ketones during a fast for cognitive and I notice a smidget of a difference, but I actually notice more if I just have MCT oil for cognitive. It's a little hard on the gut, but I get more out of MCT oil than I do out of exogenous ketones during a fast. By standards, both break a fast. MCT and exogenous ketones both equally break a fast in my opinion. So you might as well just pick the one that works better for you and experiment with yourself. But now on to how I opened this video by saying ketones are better afterwards. Okay, they are not necessarily better afterwards if you're trying to continue fat burning, 
but they are better afterwards if you're having carbs. So if you're having carbs after your fast, having exogenous ketones can actually improve your postprandial glucose levels. It was demonstrated in a study just recently. Okay, they found that when you added exogenous ketones, especially in obese individuals, along with carbohydrates, it improved the glucose tolerance. So it might actually allow you to be a little bit more insulin sensitive and not develop any insulin resistance if you had a bunch of carbs after your fast. So you're actually going to want to flip-flop how you would normally do it. It's also going to potentially help you from overeating after your fast, which could trigger metabolic gridlock and cause all kinds of problems anyway. So this wasn't just to like totally poo-poo a bunch of exogenous ketones, right? Like there's a tons of brands out there and I'm not about to make enemies with them. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you need to adjust the timing in which you have it as the research comes out. That being said, I will say, as we start to see more in the way of ketone diesters and monoesters hitting the actual consumer market, there might be a much more viable application for them. So stay tuned as I start looking into that stuff as the research comes out and as those products come out. I'll see you tomorrow.